to, to everyone here. If there are uh, questions, please. Thank I think you. Vikas is just going to quickly go through it, right? Sorry. The questions. Yeah, just go through it quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So these are some of the questions which have come. Uh, Anshu is asking, don't you think we should steer the next generation on focusing on local issues and using innovation to solve them? Uh, Asta is asking about how do we make education internet more fun and entertaining? Uh, Nakul, how do we reduce the gap between urban rural school kids? Uh, Shekhar, are you interested in making a movie on big data and crowdsourcing, role of India? <laughs> I need to know. That's easily answered. I need to know who the, the, the bad guys and the good guys are <laughs> so before I make a movie. Who are the bad guys? Guys no. are holding on to data. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay, sorry, go ahead. You want to take some of these questions quickly? Um, I think we should no, take. I think we can just take questions from yeah, here. Yeah, let's take questions from here, and then we'll yeah. go and we'll, we'll answer yeah. some of those questions. Yeah, sure. But the idea was to tell you that you are being watched <laughs> by a larger number of people than you think. What what Sam's really huh? saying is you are being crowdsourced. <laughs> right. Lots of brothers, not just big brother. Lot of little brothers. Yes, sir. Any questions? Please, somebody okay. was there. Yeah. Let's open up. Have, yes. Let me first uh, uh, congratulate Google to remind us 125th birthday of uh, C. V. Raman, which most of the scientists yes. will know, and for making such a good doodle. Uh, the second thing is I'm asking, the semantic web base, the new technology that being, you know, your new, new harmony or some software that you come in, how does this pick up the selective individual date of birth and events? You know, at what level you will go to private? How many people will let know that my birthday is my birthday today? And uh, uh, what to what level? Will you get into every possible level by or how many children I have or how much salary I get or what's my bank account? Up to what level? Um, I'm going to say one thing on that is that what we don't know yet is whether people actually want that information on. You'd be surprised at how many people want to share that information. As I said, the world is changing and when I do my own research on this, I find actually I want to share my problems. I shared, I did, made a confession right now. People like to confess in public. So there is that aspect that we haven't quite understood. But the dark side of it is up to the big boss here. So, I think uh, go ahead, go ahead. I think it's difficult, it is difficult to really hold on to information. You know, I have a friend in New York who doesn't use any more credit cards because he found out that U.S. government tracked him for five years on every credit card purchase he made to find out how many days he spends in New York because he, were, he was avoiding pay, paying taxes in New York. So every night he ate in New York they locked him and then nail him down for 12% city tax happening all over. So don't be under wrong impression that you are not being watched. Accept that as way of life. You, you have no control over it. If you got out of your house, it's public. Learn to accept that. I think all these people who talk about privacy, piracy, they're all bogus. You cannot control, it's over. Game is out of your control. So accept it. Yeah, piracy, absolutely. You know, we have this law that says that 75 years after somebody who owns a copyright, especially in author music, for 75 years that law belongs to him. And I can tell you right now, in five years, I'm going to go to my lawyer and say, can you give me copyright for one day? Because after one day, if it's not disseminated all over the world like this, it's not going to disseminate. Then I'm going to use it to create brand rather than intellectual property. And I guess one of the big conflicts of the new world is going to be between brand and, 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 and intellectual property, as it's already starting. But the question to you. Um, I'll, I'll answer your question quickly and probably, you know, shift the focus to something else, which is very related to what you mentioned. Um, there are two, I think, rules which I believe that uh, we follow as a company and I believe that most uh, companies which care about their users follow. One is you have to follow the law, right? Uh, that's critical. You can't break it even everywhere in the world. 
And uh, the second one is that um, give the control to the users. Having, I mean, and it's very straightforward, right? If you don't want to publish your birthday, if you don't want to publish how many kids you have, and so on and so forth, that should be the right of the user. And they should not do it by being tricked into it or otherwise. They should opt into every piece of information that uh, they are publishing. Having said that, it's not as easy as it sounds because somebody else will tell the world about your kids and then everybody will come to know, right? Or you will proudly put up, you know, your kids' achievements on the internet and because of that, some algorithm will derive how many kids you have, right? So at some point you want everybody to know your kids' achievements but you don't want the world to know about your kids later on. So there is this conflict of what you really want to have private. But moving away from that, um, the whole point of this uh, structured information revolution that we are going through is twofold. One is uh, there is no semantic web authority, right? There is no central body which can or ought to understand the structure of information. The whole point is everybody can. So for example, um, and this is not a real example, if one of the departments in the government of India, let's say about rural agriculture, wanted to create structured information about rural agriculture, they could modify schema.org and say this is what rural um, agriculture information for the Indian subcontinent should look like and that will become, and that will go through a review process and it will become the rule. And other scholars might overchange it over time, but it did not come from a central body. And the second purpose is it all has to start with some, some purpose, right? <laughs> the reason is that uh, if you don't have the structured information, then information consumption becomes almost impossible for the average person on the planet. And let me give a very simple example. Um, everybody here knows, and I have seen you know, TV episodes about this from the UN, at, at least as old as 20 years back, about how folding a sari eight times and pouring water through it gets rid of 99 plus percent of the bacteria. Um, I live in an area in Bangalore, behind that there's a village in Garuda Charpalia. I went and asked 10 mothers, two or, only two out of those eight, 10 mothers knew that this thing um, that's pouring water through a sari is useful, In even those two did not know how critical it was for their life, right? Now, fast forward five years from now, everybody has the internet, they're able to use it in their language, they talk to it or they write on it. If they look for diarrhea, this thing should pop up right, assuming it has been structured. So structured information makes information accessible to seven billion people versus the first one and a half of us who can read 10 search results and figure out what to use. Uh, thank you. Uh, the question that will arise is who structures the information? Um, the community does, yeah. Once you're crowdsourced and in the theoretical idea that we have an infinitely connected internet, then all information would be immediately bubble and structure itself, but every question will structure itself and come up with an answer. So there's a question and the whole crowd will bubble up and then the fundamental answers will emerge. Yeah, that's an exciting thing. What will Google do? <laughs> okay, all right, so uh, Vikas, uh, where you? Yes, sir. And one of the reasons why we are not able to do is because the students are afraid of getting educated because of one single factor, that is language. So I think in my opinion, Google should link with the universities to help students learn subjects without crossing the barrier of this language. This is one. The point number two is the biggest issue, even with the engineering colleges, we today have that only 25% of them are employable. So I think the another project Google should do with Indian universities is about increasing the employability of students. 
how you can do this. These are the two things I thought, I mean, you are doing wonderful job and so much of it being done, internet search. The moment a student goes to Google search, for example, first year, 70% of the students fail in first year. They don't even go to second year just because they are scared engineering is so tough. And why they fail it? Because of language. So you come out with some solutions, some programs on Google that they don't fail in first year. Maybe sounding funny. And the moment they have a degree, that degree should be outcome based rather than output, output based. Maybe you sit down with the university vice chancellors and do this, some innovative ways. Okay. This is what my offer. Thank you, sir. Do you have a quick answer to that before I go? Yeah, um, quick answer. I think uh, Google does not and <laughs> should not have um, you know domain on every innovation on the planet. The reason why we build platforms and APIs is that we believe that innovations will come from every part of um, not just the world, but India and every village um, and everywhere. And, and so will content. Um, we are partnering with, you know, the Academia of India. There is a partnership called, you know, there are, and we are helping them uh, on their own mission. There is this amazing self-built organization called LPTEL without, and initially without going, Google being involved at all, they just put up the videos on YouTube and 100 million views happened. Um, and this was done by IIT Madras, right? And we then found out they were doing this and we helped them a little bit and uh, they are now connected to EDX. They are now part of the EDX uh, consortium and Google is supplying the software and so on. But our, our mission is to empower. It is not to create uh, everything for people. Empower, don't create. Let the crowd create, right? Okay. So uh, Vikas, let's take some questions from the world. Um, if you just go through, select the ones and then somebody in the panel will try and answer them. So. You select the question, just read it out and yeah, then yeah. somebody so in the So I'll panel. just read out a couple of them. And just read one out and one at a time. Okay. Uh, how do we solve healthcare and its infra problems in rural India using innovation? Um, I believe we've talked a lot about that. Um, I think, we, uh, Sam, you have a very quick answer to that because you've researched We that need a lot. really low-cost diagnostics equipment and simple electronic health records. After five years of battling with the system, government of India has now announced standard electronic health record, which is a big accomplishment according to me. In U.S., one of the problems we have in U.S. is basically the electronic health records are not standardized. So I believe if you standardize electronic health records, simplify it, and have low-cost diagnostics equipment and telemedicine, will take you one step further and reduce cost of health delivery because then you will have access to doctor. Sure you have any uh, comments on that because you actually work with the people and you're in direct touch with them. So you're the human face of technology to them. Uh, yeah, but uh, I mean what Sam is saying is, uh, is, is really relevant. Uh, this innovation is happening on all these fronts, uh, right from the uh, point of cheaper diagnostics uh, uh, devices. So if, I mean you, you must have heard of things like uh, mobile phones which have a simple uh, ECG contraption strapped onto it. Uh, so th and, and through the phone, the information is transmitted real time to a doctor in the city who can monitor patients even in remote areas. So there are these kind of innovations which are happening where the diagnostic rates are, uh, uh, costs can be reduced. Uh, with medical health record uh, digitization, it means that uh, more data can be mined out of this to uh, even uh, do things like ensuring that the healthcare uh, uh, delivery is happening in a a rigorous protocol driven manner rather than sort of ad hoc which is again one of the challenges in rural areas that much of the healthcare uh, that is dispersed is uh, is not done in a rigorous uh, and organized manner so all of these are, are really things which are going to be very valuable yeah um, a mother in a rural area with no access to hospitals just imagining she has a 5 year old child who's got diarrhea severe diarrhea 104 temperature and what we are saying to her is, we've got great data. You can go to data. Now, how do you resolve that problem? This problem of trust. 
How do you resolve that? That's an emotional thing. You can go to talk to the doctor. Yep, okay. Yes, sir. Could I raise one, one question? Um, let me say, I'm apart from being in science, technology, innovation, I'm also the uh, special envoy of the Dutch government on cybersecurity. I see here on the tweet, I saw a, uh, a, tweet, a tweet on uh, accountability. Yes. And may I raise that question, actually? And it, I, I don't want to, to, uh, to just address the situation in India, of course not, that's not my, my position, but it is a much more general question. And I'm actually asking myself, when I hear the story about, um, about uh, using the internet for so many uh, well-meant purposes, there's, of course, also this other side to the yes. story. Yeah. I, I see it here again. Here it, it is about how to f use ICT innovations to fix accountability <coughs> deficit in your yes. country. I'm not going to, to mingle into that, of course. That's, uh, but it's a global question, actually. And yes. we are now, by now, we are discussing, on the one hand, freedom online. We try to build up coalition. At the same time, we have these questions about governments trying to control the internet so how does how does the panel conce how does the panel answer to this kind of problem yes so first uh, don't be embarrassed about talking about accountability we are all very aware of it and we talk about it all the time yes and uh, i think that in all the discussions we've had the innovation council but i'm going to turn this to sam is that there is no governance in the in in the world of social media and internet there is no governance without accountability because the people will go against you. So one of the fundamental ideas behind that is accountability becomes number one. People must know that the government and all the people that are delivering services to them are completely accountable for what they're delivering. Sam, do you have an answer to that? No, we don't think internet will be controlled. People will make an attempt. So fine, it's okay, let them make an attempt. You know, because this transition is going to take time. Don't expect them to change overnight. Accept them for what they are, and you will see who will win in the end. So just have a little patience. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You can start the next session. Yes, um, unless there's something really, yeah, let's wrap this up. And thank I, you. I'm I sorry, we, we haven't been able to answer all the tweets that are coming, but I think that I will try and personally answer some of them. But maybe you can retweet them to the panelists and they can just give very, very quick Twitter answers to the, to the questions. Are you happy to do that? So thank you very much. I hope this has been enjoyable. We cannot discuss social media so quickly, but everything that we've tried to do maybe has raised more questions than provided answers, but that's what social media is all about. Thank you very much. So let's move on with the next session because we got to speed Sam, it up. You're here. Yeah. If you like, uh, all the uh, foreign delegates are required to carry their passports uh, with them to the Rashtrapati Bhavan. Thank you. May I request all these speakers for the next session, please? Good afternoon, everyone. This is sort of the last session since we haven't had time to discuss. I thought we can use this session to sort of try to summarize and discuss. The earlier plan was to have some speakers. Maybe those who are here can spend a couple of minutes to summarize their version. And then we can open up for discussions and summary. Somebody asked me during lunch, what is the ultimate outcome of this 
meeting. And my answer was one, I personally made some friends, got to know some good people in a short period of time, learned from them, shared with them what we are doing, and I hope that we will continue this dialogue going forward. So that's one outcome. Two, I had an opportunity to discuss with some of the key players a few projects. I had conversation with people from Kuwait where we are going to organize a couple of projects from Brazil, from Netherlands. And I think if each one of us can come back with maybe two or three projects of interest to explore, I would like to explore with all our colleagues here at least one good project which would benefit them and benefit us. It could be technology, process, product, idea from their side for Indian market or it could be a business venture, it could be sort of collaboration on science project, pilot, whatever. But I think if we really want to engage this group, it will be good to really have something concrete to discuss. I had discussion with mayor here from Italy and we said there are a couple of things we can do together. I think if each one of us can link up and come up with some specific things to do, it will really give us a little more direction. I feel I have learned a lot and I hope some of you also feel the same way. It is not just coming here for two days and giving a talk. I think it is networking and learning from each other and making friends which hopefully would result in better understanding over a period of time. So with this, I am going to ask, you know, Michael to say a few words and then open up for discussions. Thank you, Sam. I will go via a short uh, presentation about Quick. the opportunity to do international collaboration. And I think it is uh, one of the issues that each one of us should take with him uh, at home. I'll try to do it as uh, quick as possible. First of all, uh, two words about who we are. I'm Matimop. We are coming from Matimop, the Israeli Industry Center for Industrial R&D, and we operate on behalf of the chief scientist in Israel. How we do it? We are mainly matchmaking companies internationally, and we are Look at taking one company from Israel and one company with R&D capability from abroad and matching them together, including funds, to do innovative product to the market. We, can, we, are, using, we are using a database of about 5,000 companies, R&D one. This database is open for everyone. Every one of you can access the database and look and search for partners. As I said uh, yesterday, we are dealing today with about 50 bilateral agreements all over the world, including Canada, including uh, India. Uh, uh, and uh, in India we have two agreements, in a state agreement with Karnataka, but also in a federal level with the Ministry of Science and Technology. And they are producing projects all the time, but we are covering most of the world. If it's not clear, as I said uh, yesterday, we are matchmaking companies together to do industrial R&D. The outcome is innovative products that can be basic for trade or can result to demands. We have a nice uh, application process. It took no more than six months when from application to meeting with the money, with the funds, and after matchmaking. I must say that this program is an outcome of discussion with Sam, and uh, we, are, we launched a product adoptive track that, uh, as you can see, is a new initiative introduced 
by Israeli chief scientist. The main idea is to reach uh, the, the, real, the, real, uh, the real people that needs or the demand, market demands. It's not a copy paste, it's really coming out from uh, conditions of, uh, on, on the ground and uh, we are really answering this, uh, this target. Another um, word should be said about another initiative called the Grand Challenges Canada. We joined the Grand Challenges Canada because uh, it's going to meet uh, the, the largest uh, uh, communities that are earning be, uh, be, uh, no more than $2.5 per day. And I think this is the right way to call it uh, inclusive issues. So we have a procedure in the chief scientist in Israel to respond to this uh, demand and uh, about uh, one million dollar will be put in each project that it is uh, good enough and uh, we are hoping that there will be an outcome of it and for sure uh, yes <laughs> okay uh, the project selection procedure in the chief scientist uh, is here in, a, in one uh, sentence, but the big idea is that we have joint committee with, with, between the two governments to look and how to decide and to approve and to fund a project at the second step. Uh, we are covering all the sectors of uh, uh, the science so we can cover and uh, put attention to all of them. The, the governments, both sides, are uh, after after picking up the correct project, are dealing with the funds. Uh, the funding in India is a form of uh, an attractive loan, uh, and uh, it, is a, it is an accumulation of a support according to the rules of the regulation you each program. This presentation earlier. No. No? No, no. I thought so. No, no. When you talked last time. Last time it was uh, another issue, but uh, this, uh, this exactly is focusing in, in directly So let's India. just go through it, please. Okay. 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 Uh, well, I think it would be good to have interaction as opposed to presentation. In a minute. One minute and uh, it's closed. Okay, I'm counting. And <laughs> as I said, with India, two, two programs uh, active in the state level with Karnataka and in the federal level. Uh, and I must say that there are projects coming out, five applications submitted to date in the federal level, and in the state level, nine applications submitted today, and I believe that about uh, 10 of them are going to become a real project. Last week we were uh, here in Delhi one, once more with seven companies to match make companies to have at the end of the day a okay. project. Some success stories are coming out from this. A real project are being done in this way, and uh, I'm not going to uh, go over but I think Netafim is a well-known one in the agriculture field. Uh, at the end of the day, we can say that uh, I will skip uh, Korea, Singapore success stories, but to conclude, I will say something like this. I'm sure that the inclusive become a major issue for R&D department, uh, and I can say that partnership for inclusive innovation should play a major role in the global markets and in social challenges. Thank you. We have two suggestions from OECD for all of us to discuss. One, measurement and monitoring of inclusive innovation. They think they could do some work for the group on measurement and monitoring of inclusive innovations. I would welcome a proposal if we get a proposal, I'll, we'll circulate it to all of you. And I think that'd be a good idea. We really don't have a good way to measure. And I don't know if there is a good way to measure yet. Second proposal was about sharing good practices. OECD and NESTA has been working on it. I think that's also an area, personally, I would have great interest in. You know, for all of us, I think it'll be a good idea to just see what are the best practices available in different parts of the world that we could share and learn. So I think both are good ideas. I would encourage some more work on it and we'll connect with them 
offline at some point in time. With this, let's open up for whatever little time we have. It's a pretty quiet group. You must be tired <laughs> sitting here for two days. The program this evening, just, okay, on a lighter moment, the program this evening, we go early, we sit there, we get to see a little bit of the fabulous house President of India has. And then we start the program at 5.30. It's about 45 minute program. I would have chance to speak a little bit. Then we'll connect President to three different locations through fiber optics where he could interact with people who are innovating and doing things. And then Minister of Rural Development would also be with us. He will talk for a while. Then we will uh, deliver report to the people, to President. He will receive the report. Then he will give his speech. And that will be the end of the program. And we'll have tea with everybody. I think that's the plan. We should be done by 6.30. Okay. Just to give you a brief. Please, go ahead. Let me only emphasize on my part that when you are talking about best practices, you know, I think that is of the utmost importance. And the more you would be encouraging us to systematize the ways in which we would bring forward to the fore these best practices, it would be a wonderful outcome of this uh, uh, conference. We will do that, and I'm going to request our team to see if we can begin to put best practices on the web, on our website, so at least we all can look at it. Yes, sir. Yes, again, I was suggesting a catalog of, of sort of best practices with a short format so that we can network, yes. because many of the ideas here I, I got, I, I started out wanting to do a science museum, but then I did a toy library, which is a sort of a small scale science museum, but with toy libraries, especially if they are science toys, then you can actually uh, get, the, the, they're much more frugal in a, in a sense, so it's, it's easy to do it. But uh, the other is technological innovation, but of course we need also social innovation in many, in many situations. We need uh, to explore innovations in different dimensions because uh, uh, there we are uh, sort of uh, not so, uh, d there's no strong discipline. So, so there uh, I think some effort should be made. So not only a catalog of uh, just technological but also social innovation. Agree. Yes, sir. Two submissions. One is on the topic itself of, of, of country collaboration, and, and oh no, my colleague is not here. Just want to mention that uh, the, the World Bank group has a South-South program. The World Bank works on the global distance learning network in terms of knowledge sharing. IFC works in transferring some of these models South-South. So many of the companies I mentioned, like Fino, is already working in Nepal. They're working in different parts of the world. And the idea is to transfer the models, not so much the company because most of these startups really can't afford to lose the management attention. How do you capture these models and help replicate them and support them transfer, and especially into Africa? I think it's a big play for us, and I think that that's something that NIC is also working on. Number of very good examples of models going across, including Hass Power, uh, including Exim Bank's Finance, which promotes the South-South transfer. I think there's a big play there that could be developed further. On, on the suggestion of monitoring and evaluation, I fully support that. I think uh, there's a great need for that. But uh, as we were discussing uh, earlier, there is a global network right now called uh, GIIN, which has got uh, some of the principles of measurement, and they're trying to make this global. We don't think it's really practical down the ground. So one caution that we found is that anything to work must be user-friendly to the beneficiary itself. If anything has to be objectable, verifiable, and have meaning, then it has to come from the ground up. Right now, everything is, is, is top down, and, uh, and, and my good friend who was the head of Bangladesh government at one stage said that, Anil, if I believe all the donor reports uh, and the NGO reports, there should be no poverty in my country in Bangladesh. Uh, I think there's a sanitization, and the sanitization must come down to the grassroots level. IFC would be happy to share this information as well as 
when we do the G20 competitions, all the case studies that we have, we'll be happy to share that and make that a, a public good through you. Comment there somewhere. No? Yes. Just, just a small word about uh, the whole issue of best practices and everything. I think, I mean, I, I found it, and, and I was here last year as well, and I think it's great always to hear about all the different practices which are happening. And uh, it's, it's great to, to really listen to a lot of the on-the-ground examples. What's difficult to figure out really, is it a good practice or not? Because sometimes we really don't actually know whether this works just because it is in a certain context, or is it something which we can actually generalize from? And I think that, that is often the real challenge to, to, to try and do a little bit more around that, to really understand what is behind the success of, of, of certain things and to, and to do a little bit more work on that. Because I think the danger is sometimes that we say, okay, this was a good practice, now I can actually adopt it in my own country. And that is often not the case because we don't understand where it comes from. And I think, so if we do some work on good practices, and I think Nesta is doing some work, we're doing some work, I know you're doing some work, Let's try to also figure out a little bit what's behind the success of certain cases and to, to look at things which can, we can generalize a little bit and, and can use in, in, in broader context. Because there's a risk sometimes, which I think happens a lot in innovation policy, that people just adopt an example from another country because it has worked there, but then find out that it actually doesn't work in their own context. So uh, just to, to avoid, I think, that, to, to go a little bit deeper, uh, perhaps, in, into some really understanding what, what the reason and the factors behind success are. Good point. Jeff? Well, ju just to, to build on, on Dirk's point, I mean, th there are around the world a lot of half-formed and underused repositories of best practice of various kinds. Uh, and you know, sadly, we probably don't need another one of these. Um, what is probably useful is sort of two, two levels. One thing which we've been experimenting, is what we call living maps, literally putting on maps but in particular fields of innovation so that the practitioners can at least quickly get a sense of what's out there, um, albeit not with very profound research and assessment. And then the more complex stage is what Dirk described, is getting some, essentially a common language of structuring of the knowledge of the kind Google should be helping with. Uh, one, one variant of which, which we've suggested, is labeling everything according to its standards of evidence. How much evidence is there that it works at all, that it can work in several different places, that it's got control groups, at least so there's a common language of understanding the meaning of each different uh, example. And we, we've proposed in the little note which came round here something uh, tentatively called the Hive, helping innovators virtually everywhere to at least begin to put some of those things together. So if any uh, organizations are interested in collaborating, this is definitely not something any one organization can do on its own. But I think the key is getting back to your point over there. Unless it's useful for the people on the ground in practice, and unless every aspect of design is to make it useful to the people driving, doing, supporting innovations, we will have another interesting but essentially moribund repository. So I would like to ask two questions. Uh, so first of all is, uh, when there, I would request OECD to please also catalog along with other innovations if they have come across any innovations in audit. Because these are the kind of things that tend to delay work within various organizations. And second is, and second is sir, that we, we have round tables across India but the design of the round tables is very similar. Now, TED.com has kind of come up with a new way of conversations. Can we also think of having a different design of conversations to simulate coffee table discussions the best? I don't know what the different design is, but we think this table looks like a round table. And we have social media connected with variety of other organizations. We use Twitter, Facebook, all kinds of other instruments available today. And I'm sure we can do a lot more, you know. But with the limited resources we have, I think this turns out to be a pretty good platform. But if you have any specific ideas, talk to our young team, put it in writing, and we'll definitely Explore it. Okay. Uh, 
I'm Tamer Mutairi from Kuwait, uh, representative of uh, the Minister of Education. First of all, I um, thank you, Mr. Sam, and uh, thanks for uh, National uh, Innovation Council for the hospitality and uh, the great nation of India and the government. Second thing, uh, I want to talk about uh, the, the conference. I think this is the third conference, anybody. So I suggest that the next uh, conference for the innovations, global innovation, will be after two years. So we can rethink and we can um, make our actions plan, uh, make our uh, community to, to move on on this issue. Because many will one year, another year, uh, not have, we don't have a, a full time or uh, we need the time over this. So I suggest the next uh, conference will be in 2015. Uh, and uh, from round table now, we suggest the country, our next country. We uh, thank you, Mr. Sam, that you, you the one and with our colleges uh, to, to have this uh, creative thinking about, uh, to have innovations, global innovations. And to, I suppose we have a logo for this global global uh, innovations and uh, thank you all again and thank you. we want to keep it once a year because things are happening very fast okay in our business especially in innovation two years is a long time especially at my age two years is very long time okay so I think one year works doesn't work for everybody I agree with that so people change. Some people come this year, some people will come in 15, and others will come in 17. So that's okay. You know, I think it's good to have different kinds of people. Uh, but once a year is pretty good at this time. Okay? But I do agree that next time one of the things we could do is make it a little broader, bring more business people in the conversation, bring more academic in the conversation, and really expand this base a little more. That, I think, is needed. So a lot many more people can benefit through interacting with these distinguished, you know, global visitors. Yes. Um, since you just talked about uh, uh, business, I'm going to ask a business-related question. One of the things that drives innovation, uh, wherever we have seen innovation flourish, is the potential for the innovation to turn into a small business and then a medium-sized business and maybe large. Um, and uh, we have this very insightful economist um, in India called Mr. Dr. Bhagwati. And he has written a uh, very uh, thought-provoking book. And the central thesis of the book is that uh, the backbone of an economy is not small business but medium businesses, the medium-sized businesses, which often start as small business and if you look at that there's plenty of evidence around if you looked at the many countries who are represented here they have figured out how to make medium-sized businesses flower from starting from a small innovation and I don't know the um, answer to this but so it's a honest question um, what are the factors in your view or those of you are here which is uh, stopping um, our small businesses from becoming medium-sized and uh, flourish and uh, what are the things, what are the pressure points that need to be uh, lifted to enable that? First of all, you know, it's unfortunate, but when people talk of innovation, they immediately relate it to business. I don't. Business is one piece of the puzzle. Education, health, government, judiciary, police, intelligence, security, everywhere we need innovations. So to me, innovation is more of a platform and we've been saying it over and over again. All of the stuff that is taught in business school on innovation is all about corporate innovation, productivity, efficiency, building product, venture capital. I think we know a lot about that. Okay, there's no rocket science there, but there's definitely rocket science in innovating for the government. Tough battle, okay. So we really want to keep that very broad. We have looked at why our companies are not growing. We have also talked to the government, but government is not willing to innovate. It's very simple. In India, it takes a lot of time to start a company. 
it takes even 10 times more time to close a company. Fix it. That's all there is to it. You should be able to start a company in 24 hours. You should be able to close, if it is small enough, in two weeks. We can't close company for eight years. So once you fix that, so we have a new policy document on entrepreneurship, which has been sort of in the works for two years. Not that it needs two years, it will need two weeks. But everybody has to say they put in their two bits and they all had conferences, they all had discussions. You know, so we have a document. I don't think anybody is prepared to act on that document. You know. Similarly, on education, we have eight bills pending in the parliament. We know what to innovate in education. Nobody wants to pass it. Because the guys who are supposed to pass it have vested interest. They control education institutions. We know the problem. How do we get around these? And that's why in many cases you need a bypass. So let them do what they're doing. You just create a little bypass. And the bypass is small. Nobody worries about it. Say, yeah, let them do something. Nothing is going to happen. And all of a sudden, bypass becomes so big that they panic. We need lot many more bypasses in the system. Yeah. I've been getting all kinds of notes about close now, close now, close now, and I'm ignoring it. Okay, so these guys know that I'm ignoring it. So they keep sending more and more. Some more comments? If not, Maybe we will try to close it so you all have little time for bio break, interact a little bit. I believe buses are going to be down there at 4.30, right? Yeah. Buses bus. or bus? Yeah, we will leave it 15 minutes later. Okay. So once again, thank you everybody. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate your coming out here, spending your time and energy. It has been very interesting very useful, it's getting better every day, every year. And I must say the quality of people here is just fabulous. I'm so delighted from listening to all of you, from your support, and I hope we continue this friendship. Anything I can do at a personal level, please let me know. Anything we can do from our organization, just ask. It's our duty to make sure that you are comfortable and your personal needs are met. Okay? Thank you very much, and we see you at President's house. And if you have any problem getting there, just come with me and nobody will question you. Okay? Thanks. Yeah. As, uh, just a just couple of uh, sort of little instructions I want to read out from the Rashtrapati Bhavan card. Uh, one, you need to carry the card to the venue. Foreign delegates uh, carry their passports. Uh, the carry bus. your passport, your invitation card. Yeah, and for the, all the other uh, Indian nationals, we need to carry our photo ID proof. Bus will leave in 15 minutes. The bus will take you to Rashtrapati Bhavan and bring you back to Shangri-La after the event. And no cameras, briefcase, or mobile phones are permitted inside the Rashtrapati Bhavan, so you want to leave it here. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. The Good bus to have is, you with us. The bus is downstairs. We'll start in 15 minutes. And we'll make sure that nobody misses the bus, huh? Just be here.
these conference brochures, etc., you can leave that in the bus if you don't have a hotel here. Yeah, you can leave your bags in the bus as well.